Well, hello again, YouTube. Uh, I'm going to start this video with an enormous thank you for everybody who commented and helped with my plea for help about the bubble arches. And I'll uh, do a quick shout out on a few that did because I think it's only fair. Now, the last one to comment, uh, and that was just today, Andrew Robinson. He's got the same arches to fit, so he hopes I don't mess mine up. So <laughs> hope I do a good job for you, mate. We had uh, a couple of have suggested that I put the axle back on, and that's I, I can see the sense behind that because you can centralize it up with the axle. The problem I got with that is the arch isn't actually a symmetrical, it's got a funny shape, there's it's, it's no symmetry to it, so it's, it's no real center line as such to the arch. So it's a bit of a I think that might be a little bit hit and miss. I can see a couple of suggested odd autos, and I, I did have a look to see what they had done, and that's what they did. They used the center line just underneath there. The centre line their axle their, their arches but the arches they had were for magnum and they had a centre line punch in them and these don't seem to have that but what I did get was a few so Taffy Mark 1 said he he's measured his car and it's 410 mil from the B pillar and turn that around from from there across to there which is what I was after and then they got um uh, a, a, a gentleman called Russell Lord. So thank you again for your, for your comment, Russell. He's got a genuine bubble arch car. Now that's just perfect. So I really thank you for the time you took to to measure your car, and he's given me two measurements. So a measurement from the from the end of the gutter there down to there at bear with me. So I've got a short memory, twenty seven inches, and then from the inside of the B pillar which is again that measurement there that there he's given me his measurements from his bubble arch cars 16 and three quarter inches so that that's invaluable I, I can't thank you enough for the for you taking the time to do that that's, that's just brilliant thank you very much we've got Nick Clapman he suggested that I download a copy of the escort rally prep manual so I've yet to do that but that, that's a brilliant suggestion I'm gonna have, have a look to see if I can find that Old dirt bikes. He, he said, I'm totally out of my depth here. I only work on motorcycles, but I put the axle on and line it up in the centre of the hill. What do you think? Maybe just, or maybe I should just concentrate on motor, motorcycles and be quiet. <laughs> that, that, that made me giggle when I read that. So thank you for your comment on that. Um, Neil Jarvis. And I've had a, a quite a long measurement for um, suggestion from you. So I appreciate your, your effort in that. He said, he said that lining up with the front and the rear axe uh, there, as I was doing, uh, as it happens, that that's, I wasn't a million miles off with that. So when I, when I measured it up to Russell's suggestion, actually starting at that point was about right. And we had the gent that got um, the lovely orange bubble arch car, uh, Performance Classics, I think his channel is called. He said he, he did exactly the same thing and it, it looks fine. So... That's brilliant. Sorry if I've missed your your comment and your name, he, but uh, again, absolutely chuffed that you that you all um, commented and helped me out. That has helped me out enormously. If, if anything, just give me the confidence to crack on and do this. But a special thumbs up to Russell Lord. Go and check out his channel. He got some really interesting stuff. He's I think he's a, I think he's a jeweler by trade, but he's obviously got a, a passion for for old Fords, and he's made. Uh, he's made a beautiful model of a Mark II Escort and he's currently making a scale model of a Mark I Escort completely from by scratch and using his skills as a jeweller. So, very interesting chap. Have a look see what he's doing. Right, let's crack on and hopefully make a, a good job of this. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed this episode. All right, before I get too ahead of myself, I'm going to give this a clean down with some panel wipe, which I have here, and give it a coat of give it a coat of well through primer on both sides. I think I'll probably scuff it up as well just to be on a just to be absolutely sure. All this oil and all this grime is from when they're pressing the panels they, they cover I believe they cover them with oils and all sorts to make them up, help the metal move around in the mould. Of course you want to get it off because the paint's not going to stick to that even slightly. So it's worth the effort just to get it off. 
well you can. It doesn't have to be panel white, it can be any solvent really, cellulose in is anything like that, but uh, it all costs about the same, so you might as well just get panel white. And I just ordered this off eBay, easy enough. eBay's a wonderful thing. Now wipe it as well before you scuff it, otherwise you just put in the grease into the, into the pores of the metal. Uh, when, you're, when you're wiping it over, and your cloth stays clean, that's when you know you're getting somewhere. Ah, just got a bit of 120 grit, that'll do me, just to, just to give it a scuff. See, important to doing it as well after you've scuffed it, because look how much more rubbish has come off now with the scuffing. We'll crack on with this now, because part of the year where the air is damp, this will be flash rusting in no time. I found a way of mixing up my primers. Put it in the lathe and spin it around for you know, just leave that carry on doing that while I'm doing other stuff. Ah. Bad batch and well food primer with Halfords. It's the, you can hear it, it doesn't sound right when you mix it up. It sounds like you mix up a thing of sand. That's disappointing. I've, I've had to buy two new ones because the last two were rubbish and now these are rubbish as well. Follows the channel. Well, no, I, I rant about this stuff and how wonderful it is. But the last few cans I've had have been a problem. Let's try mixing this one up in the lathe and see how that one comes on. Right, let's hope this one's better. This has now got a nice coat of primer on it, so let's uh, hold it up and see where we're at. Okay, so we're looking for seven, uh, 16 and 3 quarters from there to the edge of there. So what I'll do, I think I'll loosely clamp it kind of where I think it should go. And then... Uh, Get some measurements and move it around. Right, okay, so from this edge here, which I'll use a square to square up from. 16, oh, that's bang on. 16 and three quarter to that edge there. Happy days, okay. Well, directly down from there to there, 27. Again, if you, uh, try to get that out from there to there. And that is 27. So, nice, right, so, I'll redo my Sharpie line. You'll notice I've rubbed out the original Sharpie line. I read that sharpie line and then cut from there. Okay, so I want to creep up on this. I don't want to get uh, too carried away. So I think I'll come uh, use that as a guide. That's about an inch. We're coming an inch from that as we go in. Right, I'm going to zip disc on that now. Now, some of you know I've got a, a um, plasma cutter, which I'm particularly fond of. But I think the zip disc will be better on this. I know there's filler in behind there, because I know there's some damage in here. But I'm hoping that we're actually going to be cutting the damage out. You can see it's filler, definitely filler there. But the damage is, further, is about here somewhere, along this crease line here. So... As chance had happened, it looks like we're cutting worst of it out. Which is good news, because that means you don't have to replace the entire panel.
Club. Right, yo. Ah, that's another big hole I've made in the Escort. The good news is the worst of that damage appears to be cut out. There is a skimmer filler around here, but it is very thin. I'm hoping it'll just be a case of grinding that off. It will feel us pretty smooth in behind there. There's a little bit of a dink there, I can feel behind. But not too bad down here. We've got a insulation panel thing here we need to peel off and on this side too. So I'll peel those out of the way, give this a clean back to metal and see what we got. Right, that's got the worst of the um, this insulation pad off here and over that side. So my next one to do now is clean the paint back here. I'm going to use these poly strip discs for this. I find these are brilliant for stripping off paint and filler and they don't put a lot of heat into the panel either. But before I do that, I probably should put a couple of tack um, screws in this to hold it in place where I know it should be right. Now, as you may have guessed, I've watched a few videos on others doing this and there's two different, two definite ways of doing this. Some tack it up in behind I know a few have suggested I should try to do that and some sit it on the front. Now I can't say I can see the advantage of either way if I'm honest. Um, tucking it up behind is going to be difficult because I want to try and keep this bottom part of the sill here because this doesn't come with one. Sitting on front means you've got this two different layers of metal to play with. What I am tempted to do is get the joddle on this and joddle this flat so it will sort of sit level. Obviously, it won't work around there. So, you've got sort of best of both wheels because it would be nice if that was to sit a bit flatter. Oh, no, there's going to be there's, there's going to need to be filler, there's no doubt about that. The other option, of course, is to do a cut and butt on it. But, uh, you, know, you might come to that yet, but I'm quite nervous of doing that because of the size of it. But let's get it back in place first and get a couple of screw holes in it so we know we're putting it back where it belongs before I, before I grind away my mark. Right, on the whole, that's come out okay. So it all cleaned up around the there now, back to bare metal. You can see as I was cleaning it off, there's a reasonable amount of fillers still on there. But that might actually work to our advantage now as we lay on top. We could come back to that level perhaps. See how we get on with that. Bit of bumpiness there, so a bit of damages into there. Um, but not, overall, not too bad. A bit of thicker fillers there. The thing I'll do now is chuck the arch on and see what it looks like. Of course, before we uh, go to actually fitting the arch, we're going to be cutting out the tub here. I'm not going to, my plan is with this, not cutting it right back to there, cutting it to about there somewhere. So there'd be that much of a strip left on there, which you can then just tub out from that to meet the arch. And it's a weirdness there we've got to sort out. And I've got a replacement quarter panel there as well, I'll put a quarter, lower quarter for that bit. There. So let's chuck the wing back on and see how it lines up now. Right, 
Yeah, that's not too bad. Quite pleased with that. I'll start those there a little bit, so we need to sort that out. There, okay. That needs to come up a tad there, but we can work it out as we as we come into it. Right, next thing you're doing, take the wing back off, cut this cut this tub out, and ah, uh, that'll bring us in as we tub it out to the arch, bring us out to about there somewhere, straight off there. So that would be ideal. I'm not gonna. I don't plan on running this car so low that wheel is gonna actually be up there. Now, if the wheel is somewhere at, at rest, just just at the arch or just tucked under the arch, perhaps that'd be a nice stance, I would imagine. Okay, let's get this off and cut that out. You know, now the dust has settled, this is what we're left with. So a nice flange here we can work with just to come out from to to meet our wheel arch. Got some repairs to do there, which is no big shakes. Um, a little bit bent up around here a little bit, just needs sort of straightening out, but not too bad. All underneath here is not too bad, give another wire brush in and uh, just knock the worst of it off. Get some under seal on there to, to tidy that up once we're, once we're done. Got some repairs to do around here, and of course, we have the repairs to do in this lower quarter, which we've got a, pa a panel for. And this section here needs a bit of a repair, so all in all, not too horrendous. And I'll have to crack on with those repairs before I crack on with the arch. All right, I think I may have to do this rear quarter kind of the same time as I'm doing the arch. Uh, the panel I got for it. Magnum panel, freaking audible, I've got to say. But I'm hoping I can get away with just using most of it. So I'll probably trim it around there somewhere and sort of which should correspond to around there somewhere. And the, the, the worst of the rot is down here anyway. So hopefully between the, the two panels, I can make one good finish one. At the same time, oh, there's a swage line in this here somewhere that needs to line up with the swage line on the bubble arch. Now if you are doing these bubble arches, be aware there's a left and a right. You can see I was saying earlier about the profile of them, it's, it's, it's not symmetrical. It sort of kicks up at the front there and down and it's more sloped away towards the back. Uh, and you'll see that with the other arch there, you know, that's, that's the front, that's the back. So be aware of that, you should be putting one back to the front. So back to this, I think what I'll do is Offer this up loosely to there and cut away the worst of the rot. Sort of roughly in place, the swage lines don't really match up. I think that can be, uh, we can do something with that, mess around with that later. But what I want to do here is I think I'm going to cut most of this off here because it's just a horrible mess and it doesn't even close line up. So that's why I've kept that bit on there on purpose. This isn't brilliant, but it's, it is solid. It's, a bit, it's been bashed up about a bit. I think it's been had a bit of a knock there. Nothing too serious. It's uh, daylight through there, so I need to get a couple of beads of weld on there just to tidy that up. 
but I don't want to mess around with this flange because I want to try and keep that I want to try and keep that factory seam down there as best I can. I don't like it when they're sort of blended over. So I think what I'll do now is cut cut that off, just leaving a little bit of a tip around on there, then get this loosely fitted up to the car. And before I fit that, of course, there's some rot here that needs repairing as well. But if, if I can get this fitting nicer, then I can, I've got something to build towards at least. It, it's sort of uh, one step forward, three steps back at the moment. This is, um, <laughs> as I'm cutting into a, letting the new panels, I'm finding more, more damage behind. So it's backwards and forwards, but we're getting there. You can get these swage lines to line up with some jiggery pokery forcing around. So what it basically means is clamping this one underneath, kind of where it's got to go, then forcing this panel down. So that needs to be almost running level, whereas before it was sort of tipped up a bit. Also means I'm going to have some fun around here, cutting and getting this into place and up around here as well. But the bit that's going to be most visible is going to be here because a lot of this will be kind of hidden behind the rear bumper if I have one. So I'm going to try and do it as nice as I possibly can. Um, but the bit I want to get definitely right is this wage line here. Now it's still got to come down just a little bit more. But you can see from this side, I think, no you can't. But my, my original line for this panel was up here somewhere. So this is why I always cut a good bit past where I my final cut's going to be. And this one I'll almost certainly cut and butt into place and tinker around with it. And I'm leaning towards cutting and butting this into place too when uh, when I come to it. So as usual, it's slowly, slowly tickle away at it. But of course, before I do any of that, I need to sort out this rot on this panel here. So that is what I'm going to get on with next. All right, so the way I intend to tack this is sort of along there. There's a, there's a dip down there, and that's all reasonably okay. It's a bit of a hole there. I might even just simply drill it out and leave it as a drain hole as it happens, because it's a dip that's holding water. Uh, so I, wanna, I don't want to mess around with that shape there. But all here is pretty flat. There's a curve here and then it comes forward to this 90 degree fold here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my pipe former, to form a, uh, a bend on a bit of metal and just to bring it out over here and we'll mark out where the hole is because that's obviously important for the fuel pickup to come out of that. And then weld that in to this edge and then work our way down from that edge to I might even replace this entire piece yet. Uh, so you're fighting with it with what is here. I can just replace, cut it out and replace it. But we'll do that piece first. We'll measure that up, cut out a piece of metal and get that in place first. All right, so a piece ready, bent up and ground up. Put it into there. Just cut some shapes out of it. There's a repair to do there as well, we'll come back to that. What we'll do is try and uh, get this one cut the shape first. Cut the hole out of that first. I do using my hole punching tool, made a hole in that. I've used that on previous videos, didn't really worry about filming that. This video is going to be long enough as it is. So what we'll do now is clean up the area there with the new welding and stick that into place.
Lovely. Right, okay. So I was going to cut that off, but I decided against that. I'm going to cut that off once I've got my quarter panel into place. And that, that can just come past it for now, and we can worry, worry about that later. So, happy days. I'll quickly touch these off with the grinder now. I'm not going to worry too much about them. Right, there you go. That's that bit welded into place. And all back as it should be. So what I'll do next to arc off where my bottom's going to be. I'll put the bubble arch back on and this little section back here. Then I use and I'll just mark off the bottom of there where we want that to go. Righto, that's something we can work with. So we've got our switch lines lining up there now. And uh, this will tuck you nicely onto, onto that panel there. I've left enough of this panel long so we can join these together in there. And this, the back end here now, oop, will come in and I can work that and cut and shape it if I have to to get that to line up the back of the car. So that's start, starting to take quite a nice shape there now. The reason why I put this back on, which was to cut this off, I think I'll leave that alone until the very last minute because that's not going to do any harm by being there. But if I go cutting off too much, I'll be disappointed. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll leave that well alone until we're further down the line. Right, okay, so I can get this to line up there if I really force things. The problem is with that, I'm, I'd rather it fit comfortably by itself, so not having to force it into place. So I'll never go with manipulating this now and playing around with it so that will sit closer in place. Because if I let this grip off, yeah, things won't undo. You may be able to see how much that has bounced up, so I'm not going to really force that to go down. So what I want to try and do is, is take this panel off now and get that to fit comfortably. And I think the route to that is bending this basically there, so that so that's more. So that needs to be bent upwards, if that makes sense. So try and hand manipulate that and force a little bit more of a crown on that just by hand because that's got a bit of a crown on it. And hopefully we can get that to sit in there comfortably. Yes, that's, that's looking better by the time we, uh, everything comes out to meet, it all lines up. Possibly that needs to be tucked under there a little bit more. Thank you. 
yeah so you can see now that is lining up a lot more comfortably once it's in place so you're not not fighting because the problem is if if you're fighting it before you weld it once you weld it when the welds shrink it will snap to the direction to where you're fighting it if you like so if i'm having to fight it like this i'm worried that's gonna snap out on me on the uh or shrink outwards on me but i think that won't be too bad there eh? right i think we're gonna have to start breaking this video up into parts because we're gonna be this is taking uh, it's gonna be an almost two hour episode <laughs> otherwise so I think I'll leave this video at this point. So the next video, we'll, when we come back, we'll look at um, getting the tub in place, really, because the tub up in there to, to come out from the inner arch to the to, to the face of the, the the bubble arch. Otherwise, we it's it's going to be hours and hours of footage, and that's going to struggle to get that into a decent sized episode. So we leave it there. We've got as far as cutting out. And preparing the outer skin and the inner arch and we're, we've got the repair done in here so we've got that repair done so that's a good good step forward so i think the ne next video will concentrate on getting the inner arch um tubbed out to the outer arch and possibly get this rear quarter fitted into place so thanks for watching it's uh it's only uh a challenge and I, I said at the beginning of the video thank you for you, everybody who's commented and helped with working out where to line this up and i'm sure this this now will go forward and help others who are doing their own bubble arches so happy days